Jesus, we welcome you in this place tonight. Holy Ghost, have your way in this house tonight, God. We come expecting signs, wonders, and miracles, God. We come to be transformed. We come not to leave the same. Jesus, have your way in your presence. There is fullness of joy. God, I thank you for peace. I thank you, God, that when people step foot in this room, they encounter the one true living God. I thank you when they step foot in this room, God, they can't help but be changed. They can't help but feel your presence wrap around them, God, that it would burn up every impurity in our lives, Jesus. Come and have your way. Lord, come and have your way. God, come and have your way. God, come and have your way. We stand in the gap, God. We stand in the gap. We go ahead. God, where there's joy, there is praise. God, let us be people of praise and thanksgiving that we would usher you in, God, on our praises that you would be able to come and dwell here, that you would want to come and be in this place, God, because we're so filled with praise. We're so filled with honor. We're so filled with expectancy that you cannot resist a house of prayer. You cannot resist a house of praise. God, let it be said of us that you couldn't resist us because of our heart of hunger and our desperation, God, for all that you have for us. In Jesus' name, God, come and have your way. We lift you up. We elevate you to the highest place of honor. God, come and be the strong man in this church tonight, God, that you would come and get your glory, that Jesus would have his full reward for all that he paid for, God, that we wouldn't live half-heartedly, but that we would give you our best, that we would give you our best. Father, hear the cry of your people tonight. We lift our voice to you. We call upon the King of Kings. We call upon the Lord of Lords tonight. We say, Yahweh, come manifest your kingdom in this room. Manifest heaven in this room. Manifest your kingdom. Holy Spirit, have your way tonight. We pray right now for the will of God to be accomplished in this room. I thank you that tonight is the night of deliverance. Tonight is the night of freedom. Tonight is the night where no longer can the enemy have his way. No longer can the enemy harass your people. We call an end. We call a drought to the tactics of the enemy. We call a drought right now to come in the spirit realm. Right now to the strategies of the devil, to the tactic of the enemy. We call forth a drought. No longer will you have your way. No longer can you harass God's people. No longer can you plague people with fear. No longer can you curse people with sickness. We curse. We curse, we curse, we curse, we call forth a drought on the strategy, on the tactics of the enemy right now. Lord, I thank you that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds. Lord, I thank you that as we lift and exalt you tonight, I thank you that strongholds in Hunt County are being dismantled, are being torn down. The spirit of religion is being displaced. I thank you. It's leaving its place of power and the King of Kings is going to take residence. I thank you over Hunt County. Lord, come, come, come in this place tonight. Move like you've not moved before. We call forth signs and wonders. We call forth miracles. We call forth gifts of healing. Lord, I thank you that as the word goes forth tonight, your word does not return void. I thank you for the fruit of your word, which is healing, which
which is power, which is life, and life more abundantly in Jesus' name. We worship you. We worship you in spirit and in truth. We worship you in spirit and in truth. We sure we worship you in spirit and in truth. We are the true worshipers. We are the true worshipers that you're looking for. These people right here, we're worshiping you and only you, Lord. Strip us of anything that is not like you, Lord. Burn the sacrifice. Let me be a living sacrifice tonight and every day. Help me to be a living sacrifice. Burning sacrifice. We are the burning wild ones. We're the burning wild ones. Come on, church. Let's lift up our praises to him. It's a holy fragrance to him. He wants to hear us. He wants to come in and have relationship with us. Intimacy with the Father. Shut the lava key out of the Maya Sea out of the Maki. Shut the lava key out of the Maya Sea. Holy Spirit, God, without you, we're nothing. We're nothing without you. We need you tonight. Shut the lava. I show the book.
praises of God in our throats and a two-edged sword. We give you the highest praise. We give you the highest praise. We give you the highest praise. Oh. Hear the sound of the remnant rising. Hear the sound of the remnant rising. Hear the sound of the remnant rising. Oh, come on, that's you tonight. Hear the sound. Come on. Hear the sound of the remnant rising. Hear the sound of the remnant rising. Hear the sound. I prophesy that that's you tonight. You are the remnant. Come on. Come on. Hear the sound of the remnant rising. Hear the sound of the remnant rising. Come on, we're not moving until you put your armor on tonight. Come on, hear the sound. Come on, hear the sound of the remnant rising. Hear the sound of the remnant rising. Come on, every voice. Hear the sound of the remnant rising. Oh, there it is, there it is. It's the line of the tribe. Come on. Hear the sound of the remnant rising. Hear the sound of the remnant rising. Hear the sound of the remnant rising. Oh, Tarabas. Spirit for 30 seconds. Come on, begin to engage in warfare worship, legislative, apostolic, governmental worship. Hear the sound of the remnant. Come on, hear the sound. Let's see. Hear the sound of the remnant. Hear the sound. Oh, tell I say. Hear the sound. the remnant song. Come on. Sing. I can hear the rhythm of the Come on, church. Come on. I can hear the rhythm of the I can hear the rhythm of the Just the voices in the drums. Sing, I can. Sing, I can. Come on, remnant. Just the voices in the drums. Put it in your lips. Come on, sing. I can hear the rhythm. Sing, I can hear the rhythm of the Cause he's alive, he's alive, he's alive, he's alive. He's not dead, he's not in a manger. He's seated at the right side. He's alive, 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 he's alive. a moment to travail. There's a moment to birth. There's a moment to push right now. Who's willing to tarry? Who's willing to pray? Who's willing to war? Oh, Jesus. We're ready. We're ready. We're ready. We're desperate. We're desperate. We're ready.
can hear the rhythm just a few more moments and I
to hear and eyes to see give us ears to hear and eyes to see give us ears give us ears to hear oh and eyes to see give us ears give us ears to hear First in our hearts, and then in this room, King of glory, have your glory. King of glory, have your glory. Make us ready. Can you say that? Make us ready. Make us ready. Whatever it costs, whatever it costs. I'll pay it gladly. Whatever it costs, whatever it costs, I'll pay it gladly. Because you're worth it. Let's see, just a few moments, whatever. Whatever it costs, whatever it costs, I'll pay it. I'll pay it gladly. It's not an obligation to follow you. It's my joy. Oh, whatever it costs, whatever it costs, I'll pay it back. I just feel like there's a grace to leave a moment right here to open up for Holy Spirit to minister and convict how He pleases. Come on, for just one moment before we enter in some more high praise, can you just allow the Holy Spirit right now to point out those things? Would your response be, I'll pay it gladly. There's no oil without a crush. There's no oil without a crush. There's no oil without a crush. So come and crush me. Come and crush me. There's no oil without a crush. There's no oil without a crush. There's no oil without a crush. So come and crush me. Come and crush me. There's no oil without a crush. 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 We bless you, King of Glory. Come on, we're going to enter into some high praise. Come on, there's an assignment tonight. 
come on, there's an assignment tonight. I don't know if you can feel the urgency in the spirit, but there's something that needs to be accomplished in the spirit tonight. There's something God is doing in this place even right now. Come on, just begin to posture yourself to praise him. Come on, the word says, let the high praises of God be in their throats and a two-edged sword in their hands. Come on, let the high praises of God be in our throats and a two-edged sword in our hand. That's the word of God in hand and the word of God in our mouths tonight. We call you holy. We say you're the river that doesn't run dry. Come on, you're the river we're stepping into tonight. We bless you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. bless you. We bless you. We bless you. We bless you, Jesus. You're worthy, Jesus. You're worthy, Jesus. Oh, yes, you are. You're holy. You're holy, Jesus. Yeah. Come on, let's praise the name of Jesus. Oh, come on, we came to praise. Come on. Whatever comes, whatever goes, there is one thing that I know that you are faithful. Come on, let's step in. You are faithful. So I speak out your word. So I speak out your word. It has the power to change my world. You're my breakthrough. Come on, sing your mind. You're my break. Sing, I will trust. I will trust you. Come on. And I trust you. Let's go. Come on, let's see this about 
Come on, sing it again. Cause you are. You are the never ending river. Flowing full of power. Washing over me. Come on, I will run. And I. Come on. 
break open prison doors. Oh, come on, set all, set all the captives free. Spring up a will, spring up a will, spring up a will. In me, in me. Sing, nothing can stop, nothing can stop this joy. Spring up a well, spring up a well, sing it again, prophesy, break open, break open prison doors, send all the captives in the name of Jesus, spring up. Jesus, we declare to spring up, spring up a well, spring up a well, spring up a well. Sing, we come alive, we come alive. Yes, we do. We come alive. Every time we dive in, we come alive. Break open prison doors. Come on, come on, pray to that. Set all the captives free. In the name of Jesus, spring up. Spring up a Spring up. Spring up a In me. Spring up a Living waters shall flow, sing. Nothing can stop this joy. Oh, I'm dancing.
in this river. Oh, see, that river is a river of healing, says the Lord. And it says it's so strong and so mighty that it can even grow fish in the Dead Sea. I don't know if you know, there's not supposed to be life in the Dead Sea. So when that river of healing comes and you take it by faith and you dive all the way in, and you dive all the way in, there is healing, there is joy, <laughs> there is joy. Come on, anything you're in need of right now, come on, just dive into that river. We're just going to leave this for just a moment. Come on, this isn't hype. This is the word of God, that there's a river that would never run dry. Oh, Jacob's well wasn't enough, but the God of Jacob is in the house tonight. Oh, we love your presence. Oh, it refreshes the weary soul. Oh, come on, we're not moving from this moment right here. Even now, dry and weary souls are being restored and refreshed. Come on, stay right here. Oh, come on. Rivers in the desert. You're making rivers in the desert. Come on, sing. There's healing in the river, joy in the river. Just whatever flows out. The Bible says that the kingdom of God, just kind of keep that, kind of keep that vibe going. Just kind of keep that that chill vibe going. We've tapped into something right now. There is the kingdom of God is here. I don't know if you can sense it, but man, the kingdom of the Lord is here. The Bible says the kingdom is not a matter of what we eat or drink. Paul actually says what you eat, and it says what you eat is going to be destroyed, and your body, your stomach's going to be destroyed. 
So the kingdom of heaven is not a matter of what we eat or drink, but righteousness. Somebody say righteousness, peace, and joy. Say righteousness, peace, and joy. When, when, when they're singing about the river, we're singing about the river. We're singing about the kingdom of God. That's what the kingdom, the kingdom of God, the Bible says in Revelation, there's a river flowing from the throne of God, and there's trees of life on both sides of the river, and it produces 12 different kinds of fruit. It produces, and, and the leaves in the trees are healing leaves. So from the river, there's healing and there's joy. Whatever you're in need of, just lift your hands right now and let the river wash over your soul. Come on, just let the river wash over your soul right now. You came to an oasis tonight. You came to a river tonight. Come on, there's healing in the river. There's joy in the river. There's breakthrough in the river. Hallelujah. Come on, there's laughter in the river. There's laughter, 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 laughter. Peace, love, patience. Hey! Come on, keep singing that. That's good. There's restoration in the river. Restoration, come on. There's restoration in the river. Just close your eyes and lift your hands and receive this as they're singing prophetically right now. Just receive it. Let it, let it fill your soul. There is healing in the river. There is joy in the river. All you need is in the river. restoration in the river. There is healing in the river. All you need, all you need is in the river. Come on, we're going to stay in this pocket for a minute. If you'll put on the screen Revelation 22. Revelation 22, verse 1, NLT. When you get it, throw it up there. I want you to see this. Then the angel showed me a river with the water of life, clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb. It flowed down the center of the main street. On each side of the river grew a tree of life bearing 12 crops of fruit with a fresh crop each month. Let me break a lie. Let me break a lie off of your mind tonight that you have to have dry seasons. Let me break that lie right now. Let me break that mindset. I'll break it off of you. You don't have to have a dry season ever again. You don't have to have a season where you're lacking joy. You don't have to have a season where you're lacking healing. You don't have to have a season where you're lacking love. For God says he wants you to be full of fruit. Full of fruit. God's will for us, Jesus said, is fruit that remains. He wants to be, he wants us to be abounding with the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Some of your faces look miserable right now. It's almost like so, it's so easy, you're trying to make it complicated in your brain. And your face is like, it almost looks disgusted, but you could just be processing. It's so easy. All you have to do is open your soul and receive it. Come on, don't overcomplicate this. You know what the gospel is? The gospel is one word, Jesus. Jesus is the gospel. Oh, don't get me started. It flowed down the center of the main street. On each side of the river grew a tree of life. This should be putting smiles on every person's face. But because the devil's lie to you saying this has to be a tough season and the next season might be a little easier, but then the season after that's going to be a little tougher and you're going to move five steps forward, six steps back. You believe the lie and therefore you think you're spiritual by having an intense, miserable looking face and you call it warfare. But I want to tell you right now that every season God has called you to bear fruit. He's called you to live in abundance. 
And all you have to do is yield. 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 For the Lord has prepared a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. Because I can hear it right now. Somebody thinking. I can hear somebody thinking. But pastor, I'm going through a tough, I'm going through a tough season right now. I'm, I'm, I'm going through something right now. It's not a season, but you're, you, you've been hit with something. Let me, let me share that verse with you again. God has prepared a feast for you in the midst of your enemies. You may have been hit with something, but that does not negate the fact that the fruits are right there in front of you to partake. The devil's lied to us saying when you get hit, the fruit disappears and now you got to work for it. You got to work for nothing. Jesus said the Father, the work my Father wants you to do is believe in the one that he sent. That's the only work you have to do. All you have to do is believe that the fruit is right there in front of you for the taking. And when you just yield, it will permeate your soul. Don't be drunk with wine. Wine's made from grapes. It's an earthly fruit. But then he says, don't be drunk with wine as an excess. Be filled. It's a continual filling, a continual renewal, a continual filling, a continual renewal. That's why they just tapped into this right here. And there's a river gushing from the throne of God into this place. And some of you are making it so complicated. The devil's painted this illustration in front of you, this, this illusion that, that's a, that's an, that it's an obstacle course to get to the river. That's what I see in the spirit right now for some of you. You think it's an obstacle course to get there. And all you have to do is walk through the fog and you're going to find the river. Hallelujah. Bearing 12 crops of fruit with a fresh crop each month. The leaves were used for medicine to heal the nations. Lift your hands all over this place right now. They're going to sing this again. We're in a prophetic moment right now. We're in a prophetic moment. Don't make this difficult. Don't make this challenging. Don't make this difficult. The Holy Spirit revealed to me this week that many of you in the room are involved in witchcraft. There's many people in our church and in Hunt County involved in witchcraft. I want to break it off of you so you can receive. Let me tell you, put your hands down for a moment. I know I said lift them. Let me tell you what I mean. You're going to hear me say this probably throughout the rest of my ministry. It's not Ouija board witchcraft. It's not tarot cards. Unless it is for you. Holy Spirit revealed to me this week, many of you are involved in witchcraft. I've been involved in witchcraft. And I didn't know it. here for a moment. Look at me in my eyes for a minute. Don't look at the ground or the team. Look right up here. Even if I'm making eye contact with you, look at me in my eyes. The kind of witchcraft that many of us have been involved in is the witchcraft of works. You hear the gospel, all you have to do is put your faith in Christ and then you leave, and now, and you leave, and then you start working for salvation. And it's it's like how COVID, if you've been hit with COVID, when I got hit with it, at some point during that time frame, around three weeks, I got hit with the fogginess of mind. And you're there, but you're not there. You can have a conversation, but you have to strain really hard to focus. And that kind of witchcraft, the Bible says it's a spell. Who has put this spell on you, Paul told the church in, in the book of Galatians? Who's put this spell on you? It's witchcraft. And when you get involved in witchcraft, there's a spell involved. And the spell convinces you that you have to now work for your salvation. Now, if I were to hand you the mic tonight, you would come up and say, oh, pastor, the gospel's very easy. All you have to do is put your faith in Christ. But there's, there's a Bible faith, and then there is a deceptive faith. So you got to make sure we're talking about the right kind of faith. 
The true kind of faith is what the Bible talks about. And when you really put your faith in Christ, you become a new creation and there's transformation. But the Bible says in Colossians that once you put your faith in Christ, the Bible says you have to continue to follow him. And some of you, actually many of us in this church, we put our faith in Christ and then we stop following him by now following ourselves by thinking it's on us to save ourselves. And the Bible calls that witchcraft. And it's witchcraft is witchcraft as witchcraft is witchcraft. It's just a sneaky kind of witchcraft. And because many people in Hunt County don't see it as witchcraft, and they pride themselves in how hard that and, and, and how hard they work. They pride themselves in how hard they work. They pride themselves in the fact they they've been sober for three months on their own. Self-righteousness. They pride themselves that they haven't smoked cigarettes in a year on their own. They pride themselves on the fact that they go to church and they're so strong-willed they haven't missed a service. They've had perfect attendance for 12 years on their own. Look at what I've done. Look what I've done. Look what I've done. Can we hand me my Bible, babe, real quick? We're about to go back into this moment, but I want to break this spell off of you. It's a spell. That's what religion is. It's a spell. Somebody say religion's a spell. It's a spell. It's, it's a spell just like if you were to go to a witch doctor and they were to put a spell over you. It's from the pits of hell. It's the same kind of witchcraft. It's just, it's manifested differently. And many American believers, while we're powerless, is because we're underneath the spell of religious witchcraft. It's a spell. And God wants to break that off of you. I've been, I've been thinking, Lord, why? What's wrong? What's going on in our church? And this week, he finally gave me the answer. We've been pressing in. We've been talking as a staff. What's going on? We have these moments of breakthrough, then we, then, then, we, then we fall back because we fall back into works. We go back into the spell. You can tell when somebody's under a spell when they're straining to receive. They're straining versus just yielding. When your face looks miserable, it could be that you're under a spell. Try, trying so hard. And, uh, no, that's not how you get it. I want to show you something. I want to prove to you that this is a spell. And then I'm going to read a verse out of Colossians. In the book of Acts, Paul and Barnabas go to a city. They get kicked out of that city because they're preaching the true gospel. Paul and Barnabas told the people there, continue to rely on the grace. You know what religion says? It's on you. It's on you to obey the Bible. But the true gospel is just rely on the grace. What's the grace? The work of the cross. No, pastor, that's too easy. It's, it's, it's got to be more. If you think it's more, you're under a spell. If you think it's on you to clean yourself up, you're under a spell. If you think it's on you to save yourself, you're under a spell. If you think it's on you to break that addiction off your life, you're under a spell. If you think it's on you and you go to, you go to AA classes, Hey, listen, God can use an AA class. He, he, can, he can create a divine connection there. I don't want to bash AA classes. But if you think the AA class is what breaks the spell off, you're under a spell. This is a spell. They go to one city. They preach the true gospel. You know what? You know what the people in the book of Acts, I think chapter 14 or 13, you know what they said? This is what they said. Focus, focus. Lean in right now. Lean in. I need you to lean in. This is what they said. We're going to go back into this moment. They said, you know it's the true gospel when people come up to you and they say, they, this is what they said, Becca. Can you teach us the same thing again next week? You know how many Christians get bored with last Sunday's message and they want something fresh? 
But when you when you really put your faith in Christ, you can't you can't stop and just keep hearing it and hearing it and hearing it. And it's fresh every time. It's fresh every time. It's fresh every time. You know the spell is broken when you have, you know the spell is broken. You know the spell is broken. Listen to this. You know the spell is broken when you are no longer tired of hearing the gospel. You know, another way to word it, you know the spell is broken. Listen, when you realize you never graduate from hearing the gospel. If you think you've graduated from the work, every, every blessing from above came through the work on the cross. Every blessing. So he said, can you tell us the same message again next week? And the Bible says almost the entire city showed up. And the Bible says the religious leaders got jealous. They got religion gets jealous. Religion's jealous right now. Because religion loves to boast in their work. It's too easy, pastor. That's religion. That, that's too easy. It's got to be more. I've been taught there's more where you've been taught wrong. No, I've, I've been taught it's on me. I've, I've been taught it's on me to obey the Bible. You've been taught wrong. You've been taught religion and you're under a spell. Now your heart may be as genuine as all get out. You really want to live a pure life. How many of you guys say, I really want to live a pure life under the Lord? Come on. That's so many people. So many people, Tyler, want to live a pure life. But you can't live a pure life when you think you're good because you did something that was holy. Somebody came up to Jesus and they said, Master, you're good. And Jesus said, only my Father in heaven is good. When you think you're good, you're under a spell. When you think you've arrived, you're under a spell. When you think you're God's answer to Hunt County, you're under a spell. When you think you're the Bible answer man, you're under a spell. These are all indicators of how you know you're under a spell. But when you realize, I have one option and one option only, and that's to rely on the Holy Spirit. I have to rely on the Holy Spirit for my daily walk I have to rely on the Holy Spirit when I preach. I have to rely on the Holy Spirit when I'm, when I'm helping a marriage. I have to rely on the Holy Spirit whenever I'm loving my children. I have to rely. Everything takes me relying on the Holy Ghost. And when you get that revelation, the spell is broken off of your life. If you think you're a great husband or a great wife, within your own power, you're under a spell. It's the Holy Ghost. That is the grace of God. It's the cross that released the power of the Holy Spirit. That's what the gospel is. So they go to that city. They kick these guys, Paul and Barnabas, out of the city. And they go to another city. You know what they didn't do? They didn't stop preaching. They continued to preach. And they preached boldly what they did. They preached boldly. And then guess what happened there? Bring the music down a little bit. Guess what happened there? The religious leaders got upset there. And this is how you know that it's witchcraft. Now it doesn't say witchcraft, but the Bible says that the religious leaders begin to confuse those who were listening to Paul and Barnabas. When confusion hits your mind, it's witchcraft trying to get into your mind. When you leave here tonight, and if you think for one moment it is on you to obey the Bible, that is witchcraft trying to put a spell on your mind. And then guess what follows? You know, you know it's religion because anxiety follows, hopelessness follows, because then whenever you do stumble in sin, you beat yourself up as if you're the one who purifies yourself as if you're the one who can hold yourself up. You know why people beat themselves up? Because they think it's on them to hold themselves up. But when the spell's broken and you sin and you stumble, you know, practicing sin and then sinning 
are two different things. The Bible says true children of God don't practice sin. So if somebody's practicing sin, they're not a true child of God. That's the difference. But if you sin, what's the point? What's the answer? You turn your eyes back on Jesus. Can I tell you what religion says? Religion says, oh, you just got saved? Okay, come here, Sarah. Let's sit right here. This is what religion says. Oh, you just gave your heart to the Lord? Great. Here, you see this book? Now it's on you. It's on you to make sure you meet all the requirements in the book. Here, take it. Take it and read it, and it's on you. to. And if you don't, I can't guarantee you're going to make it to heaven. I can't guarantee. So my preaching now is going to make sure that I can control you and manipulate you and continue to just force that spell deeper into your soul and make you feel like trash whenever you leave and make you feel like it's on you to now obey everything that Bible says. But hey, we celebrate you got saved. Hallelujah. But I, if you want to make it to heaven, you got to make sure you obey that. All right, God bless you. That's discipleship. We'll see you later. And then she comes and says, Pastor, oh, man, Pastor, oh, I blew, I blew up on somebody at work today. Oh, I feel like such a failure. Well, you know, you should. Because the Bible says be holy. The Bible says be holy, and so you need to be holy. So you need to repent. And then make sure you never do that again. Good luck. You have the Bible. Good luck. Can I tell you what the true gospel is? Can I tell you what the true gospel is? Stay right there, sir. I'm not done with you. <laughs> yeah, I know you're trying to leave right now. I get it. You're looking at your workout calories, how, how much you've been jumping over there. Yeah, no, I'm kidding. I'd be doing the same thing if I would remember to start my, you know, my watch. Might as well get a workout and some worship, you know what I mean, at the same time. I haven't forgot about the moment. We're about to go back into this. The spell is about to be broken, and there's about to be freedom released. Freedom's already coming to hearts right now. This is, oh, you got saved? This is the true gospel. You ready? You got saved? All right. Now listen, this book right here, it's not a book of law. This is the heartbeat of Jesus. Look into his eyes and never take your eyes off him. And if you do find yourself where you've sinned, there's no condemnation in Christ. So don't beat yourself up. He's the only one that can take that desire out of your heart. So you just keep your eyes that's the gospel. So now there's this desire to want to read the book. And when you read the book, you're looking into his eyes of fire. That's the gospel. Thank you. Now you can go back over there. That's the, that, that's the gospel. A spell says it's on you. The gospel says it's on him. Religion says it's on you. The gospel says it's on him. It's on him. But you know, your part is to yield. The only work you have to do is believe and yield. Just believe and yield. Believe and yield. As you learn to know your creator. The Bible says, so they, the religious people came. Look, get this, get this. Bring the music down a little bit more. The religious people came and they begin to confuse, they begin to confuse the minds of the people that were listening to the true gospel. And then the Bible says that God gave them power. He backed their message with signs and miracles. You know why in many religious churches there's not signs and miracles and healings? Because it's not the true gospel. You know you've entered into a church where they preach the true gospel when there's signs, wonders, and miracles. You want to know what kind of church you need to go to? You need to go to a church where there's signs, wonders, and miracles happening because that's an indicator that they're preaching the true gospel. You know, listen, I, I would just encourage you, if you understand the true gospel, make yourself smile. Unless there's a demon about to manifest on the inside of your soul and you can feel it bubbling up, which could be the case, and I hope it is so you can get set free, make yourself smile. Make yourself smile. So many of us have been taught it's on you. Our whole society is built around you work, then you get a reward. You work, then you get a paycheck. You work, then you get a paycheck. Work, then you get a paycheck. Or here's another lie. I'll pay you part up front, work more, and then, depending on how good your job is, then I'll pay you the rest. So many of us believe that spell of religion. 
Oh, I got the Holy Ghost, but if, really, if I really want to make it to heaven, now it's on me. You, you, you gave me the initial deposit. Now, if I really want the full reward of sharing in your glory, I, man, that's revelation right there. Many people in this room may be believing that spell. Well, God, I know you gave me the Holy Spirit, but I know if I really want to share in your suffering, then I've got to make sure I obey your Bible and obey your word and obey your law. And if I don't, oh, I don't want to grieve the Holy Spirit. Oh, I don't want to. And your heart's so genuine in it. But it's all human effort, and God doesn't count it. And so this is why people all throughout Hunt County, they love the Lord, but they're miserable. There's no joy. There's joy. Joy. There's no joy. There's no joy. There's no freedom. Listen, can I be honest? I look around the room, even on a Thursday night, there's many people who are full of joy and freedom. And then I look at others, and my heart is broken. My heart is sad because there's something missing in your life, and it's this. It's, it's understanding the true gospel. Go and set the captive free. When I see people not rejoicing, they're held captive by something. Because the kingdom of God is not miserable. The kingdom of God is not heroic where we stand there and we look very, very, uh, very, very religious and spiritual. And, Pastor, you can't let me do anything. It's, it's not based off what you tell me to do. It's based off my heart. I get it. Totally get it. Totally understand that. I get it. But I see you as captive. read this and we're going to go back into this moment. I'm going to declare and pray that the spell is broken. Matter of fact, if that's you, go and let the Holy, he's already working on your heart. I'm going to have you come to the front in a minute. My wife and I and our team, we're going to lay hands on you. That spell is going to be broken and freedom's about to hit this place at a whole other level. We've already tapped into something. That river's still flowing. It's still here. It's still flowing. It's still flowing. It's still flowing. The Bible says that God gave Jesus the spirit without measure. Somebody say without measure. That means there's, there's no reason why we should ever be in lack. If you understand you're a spirit being and that really has become your real life, which the Bible says it is your real life, until you identify with your real life, you will be in lack because you're living out of your soul. But when you learn to live out of your spirit, it fills your soul and you never are in lack again. That's the key. It's as simple as that, but it's a yielding. It's a yielding. Peter, let me wash your feet. He said, no. He, Jesus said, if you don't let me wash your feet, you can have no part in me. And Peter did not kick while Jesus was trying to wash his feet. Some of you are kicking while Jesus is just here wanting to wash you. you you're kicking. You still think it's on you somehow to clean yourself up. All you have to do is yield. Kicking can represent maybe if I raise my hands high enough. Maybe if I pray louder. Maybe, maybe if I do this or do that, it's still based on human effort. Maybe if I do this, it will get God's attention. You know what God wants from you is to yield. And out of that yielding, you'll lift your hands. Out of that yielding, you'll jump. Out of that yielding, you'll weep. Out of that yielding, it will be expressed differently. That's what it is. It's just a yielding, and then from that comes an unction from the Holy Spirit. That's how that works. When you really know the gospel, you're completely set free. The Bible says in Colossians, so you are also complete through your union with Christ. But many people in the room don't feel complete. If I were to take a poll right now and you're to be honest, I bet you at least half of the room would say, I don't feel complete. But the Bible says you are complete. So either you are complete or you're not complete. And I choose to believe the Bible over anybody's feelings. You know why you're complete? Not because, not because you feel complete or, or because you don't feel complete. It, it's, it's, not, it's not when you feel complete, you're complete. It's because the Holy Spirit, because you, when you said yes to Jesus, your spirit came alive and, and that's what made you complete. In other words, you're a spirit being now. Your spirit is complete and that's who you really are. But many of you don't feel complete because you identify with your soul, not your spirit. And your soul is dry. Your soul is at the... It, 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 
you're scraping the bottom of the barrel of your soul and you're trying to praise and worship and, and be used by God by scraping the bottom of the barrel and that's going back to works. It's on you to make it happen. But when you realize you're a spirit being, boom, game over. Somebody say game over. So it says this. Jesus canceled the record of the charges against us. Talking about our sin. And he took it away by nailing it to the cross. He nailed your old man. When you say yes to Jesus, your old man got nailed to the cross with Christ. That's how that happens. Your, old, your, your fleshly body, you have to see yourself as if you are up there with Jesus nailed to the cross. That's your old man. That's your sinful nature. Look at this. In verse 15, Colossians 2. In this way, in what way? Him dying on the cross. He disarmed the spiritual rulers and authorities. Oh, pastor, we're in warfare right now. Oh, I'm just in a season of warfare. Oh, I tell you right now, we're just going to war. We're going to war. We're going to war. The Bible says he actually disarmed. If you're in a season of warfare, oh, we're going to war, baby. Whoa, we're going to war. Oh, it's on us. I tell you what, it's on us. It's on us to turn on the principalities. It's no. Actually, Jesus already did that. actually didn't tear down the principalities. I shouldn't say that because that's not true. But he did disarm them. In other words, there's a bad guy right there in front of you and he has no authority over you. Any weapons he has, he can't move to get to them. He's frozen. He disarmed. The Bible says he disarmed. Somebody say he disarmed. Now either he did disarm or he didn't disarm. Choose to believe the word. He disarmed. Pastor, how you just believe that he did? And then you trust that he is going to be your guardian. That's how that works. No, Pastor, it's not that easy. It is that easy. And if you don't think it's that easy, you're under a spell. That's how easy, that's the gospel. That's all it is. That's all it is, church. The true gospel. You know what deeper revel you want to know what deep revelation is? Deep revelation is just because what happens is people say, Oh, I know the gospel, but I want I want something else. But what deep revelation is, it's a it's a different aspect of Jesus. It's a different aspect of Jesus a different aspect of the work he did on the cross. Anybody getting this? Don't, don't believe that ridiculous lie to where like you think you've graduated from the cross and now you're out here to be God's prophet to the world. I just want the deeper things. Oh, pastor, it's just... I hear people say, I went to that church, they weren't feeding me anymore. I tell you, they weren't feeding. No, you just got bored with the gospel. And you got spiritually arrogant. That's what it is. If you get bored with Jesus, if you get bored with the gospel, you're bored with Christ. And, and then that's when you get the letter that God said to us on Sunday, look how far you've fallen. This is how people fall far. Here it is. He disarmed the spiritual rulers and authorities. He shamed them publicly by his victory over them on the cross. So don't let anyone, if you're a dead man on the cross, you know why many people feel, feel the attacks of the enemy? Because they've taken themselves off the cross thinking it's on them to obey the Bible. Anytime you think it's on you, then you're an open target for the enemy. But anytime you see yourself as a dead man walking and you're on the cross like Jesus, here's the picture. Our life 24 seven should feel vulnerable. If you do not feel vulnerable, you are no longer a dead man. You now have taken it in your hands to walk this thing out on your own. 
That's why Amos 6.13, God is speaking that to us. You who boast in nothing, good job. You who conquer your flesh on your own, good job. I count it as nothing. I don't even count it. Because you've taken yourself off the cross, and now it, you feel like it's on you to obey the Bible. That is the spell of witchcraft. When's the last time you sinned? How much did you beat yourself up? If you beat yourself up, you're under a spell. I'm going to preach this until we get it. I'm going to preach this until we get it. Paul says in chapter 1, verse 28, So we tell others about Christ, warning everyone and teaching everyone with all the wisdom God has given us. We want to present them to God mature in their relationship to Christ. That's why I, I work and struggle so hard depending on Christ's mighty power that works within me. We want to present them as mature. He said, God's given me this responsibility of serving his church by, by proclaiming his entire message to you. For God wanted them to know the riches and glory of Christ. And this is the secret. Christ lives in you. This gives you assurance of sharing in his glory. That's the gospel. He goes, I, I want you. Paul talks about at some point, if not what I just read, I want you to make sure you understand. Here it is right here. I want them to have complete confidence, chapter 2, that they understand God's mysterious plan, which is Christ himself. If you get beyond Christ, then you have now moved into witchcraft. If you get beyond Christ, you are now listening to a different doctrine, and it's a doctrine of demons. If it is not Jesus, it is not the gospel. If it is you without Christ, it's witchcraft. It's a spell. It's religion. Let me read this again. I want you to know. I'm paraphrasing. I'm just putting my own words. I want you to have complete confidence that they understand God's mysterious plan. Church, I want you to hear me as your pastor. I want you to have complete confidence that you know, that you know, that you know the true gospel. And that you're able to communicate it so clearly to everybody you rub shoulders with. Because when you get a revelation of the true gospel, you can't help but love people. You can't help but walk around with a smile on your face. You can't help but be a giver because God has given you everything through His Son. You can't help but be a free man. The spell's being broken off right now. I sense that in the spirit. The spell is being broken off right now. So don't let anyone condemn you for what you eat, drink, for not celebrating certain days, holy days, or new moon ceremonies or Sabbaths. For these rules are only shadows of the reality yet to come, and Christ himself is that reality. Don't let anyone condemn you by insisting on poise, self-denial, or worship of angels saying that they've had visions about these things. Their sinful minds make them proud have made them proud, and they are not con connected to Christ, the head of the body, for he holds the whole body together. These rules may seem wise because they require strong devotion. This is religion. These rules may seem wise because they require strong devotion, poise, self-denial, and severe body bodily discipline. If you boast in your own discipline, you're under a spell. Poise, self, oh, pastor, that's not for me. Under a spell. Oh, pastor, I already know the gospel. That's not for me. Under a spell. I, want, I just want to expose it for what it is. That's, that's not for me, pastor. I tell you what, I've been saved for 20 years. And I... Nope, under a spell. The moment you stop allowing the true gospel to create love in your heart and butterflies in your stomach and a thankfulness, the Bible says you'll be continually thankful. There'll just be a thankfulness that overflows. When you stop being thankful for what Jesus did, you start to fall away from your true love. That's the light on the dashboard. When all of a sudden you think it's about you and your struggle and everybody needs to stop what they're doing to pray for you because you're in a deep struggle, you're fallen from Christ. What's the answer? Jesus. 
These rules may seem wise because they require strong self-devotion, poise, self-denial, and severe bodily discipline, but they provide no help in conquering a person's evil desires. They provide no help. So if you really want help and you want the spell of witchcraft to be broken off of your life, then I want you to come to the front and you say, man, I'm tired of dealing with the same things over and over. I know this is wild ones, but I'm telling you right now, this is fresh revelation for myself. If you say, listen, this right here, I want, I want this spell to be broken off of my life. I want this spell to be broken off of my life. I want this power of witchcraft, this religious fogginess of mind that boasts in self and that makes me feel like it's on me to obey this book. Come to the front. Come on. Don't let spiritual pride hold you. Don't let spiritual pride hold you back. If you've been taught it's on you, come to the front. If you believed it's on you, come to the front. Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. This is what this is what the devil will say. This is what he says. This is what he says. This is what religion says. The religion doesn't want you down here right now. It does not want you down here. Religion says, no, you're good. Nobody's good. It's Christ in us that makes us good. Come on, you want that spell broken off of your life. Here's the gospel. Trust Jesus. Trust. Here's the gospel. Trust that Jesus is doing the work in you. Stop trusting in yourself that it's on you to make the work happen, to make yourself pure, to make yourself have holy desires. Only Jesus can produce holy desires in you. Only he can produce holy desires in you. Only he can. You know how I know Jesus is working in you right now? Bring the music down. You know how I know Jesus is working in you? Because you have a desire to want to be pure. That's how you know he's working in you. If you wanted to just go and live your life and live in sin, and you, you just straight up just walked away from Jesus, that's a different story. But the reason I know that he's already started the work in you and that he will complete it is because you have a desire to be pure. And as long as you trust that Jesus will complete it, he will produce those desires in you in the fits of rage and anger and bitterness and jealousy and offense, all of that he will take out. All you have to do is yield. All you have to do is yield. It's not on you. It's not on you. Listen, some of you thinking of one person, but there might be more than one. You've been taught a hard gospel. You've been taught a hard gospel. Oh, you work for it. Oh, you work for it. Oh, you work for it. That's a spell. That's a spell. Hallelujah. Anybody else say, that's me, I want that spell broken off my life. Let me put it this way. If you're miserable, this is for you. If you say you serve Jesus, yet you're miserable, this is for you. If you don't smile much and you say you're a Christian and you, and, and you say you're a follower of Christ, but you don't smile much, this is for you. There's a spell over your mind. Can I tell you, when you don't smile much, it does not produce joy in the room. It actually causes a red flag to go off for people like myself. Why do they look miserable? Why do they claim to be a Christian, but I hardly see them smile? Why is it when I get around them, it's always like this very poised way of that they got to talk to me? That's religion. You know why it rubs me the wrong way? Because there's the Holy Spirit in me that says there's something off in them. If that's you, come down. Holy Ghost is tugging on your heart. Father, I come against spiritual pride right now. Intercessors pray right now. I come against spiritual pride. We're going to lay hands on those who responded. Those of you who responded, I just want you to yield to the Holy Spirit right now. But I'm going to come against this demon of spiritual pride and religion. That is hindering anybody in the room right now. Father, in Jesus' name, I bind spiritual pride. Those who think they're good. I bind it. Holy Spirit, I thank you right now. You're moving and you're, and you're revealing. You're revealing, you're revealing, you're revealing, you're revealing right now. You're revealing that they're, that they're under a spell. It's like a fogginess of mind. It's like this, it's like this, this feeling of misery. I'm not fully, ah, just, man. 
just feeling of lack of joy and lack of love. Hallelujah. 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 I want to share a vision that I had this morning that, that is for this moment. And I believe it's for those of you who came down, and I also believe it's for our church. Uh, this morning I saw an altar, like, a, like at a wedding, like a groom and a bride at an altar. And Jesus, our groom, we are his bride, he was standing at this wedding altar, and his arms were wide open like he was trying to hug his bride. And unfortunately, the, the bride was doing this, hugging herself. And I heard the Holy Spirit say, Jezebel has infiltrated the church. And while pastor is sharing this, I didn't know that he was going to be talking about this, about witchcraft in the church tonight. But I am just hearing this over and over and over again as I'm sitting there. Jezebel has infiltrated the church. Jezebel has infiltrated the church. And what it has done, Jezebel represents control. It represents religion. It represents manipulation. It represents someone who schemes, someone who tries to control. That is religion. Jezebel has infiltrated the church, and what it has done is it has caused a lot of people in the bride, a lot of people in the church. When Jesus is trying to open his arms and pour out the love of God, we are stuck hugging ourselves. Self, 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 self. Protecting ourselves. Because that's what you do if you're being harassed by Jezebel or a controlling spirit is you're trying to protect yourself. So we're going to come against this demonic witchcraft that has put a spell on the bride, Oasis Church, Cattle Mills. But I want to just even take this a step further. If you have been harassed by Jezebel, a controlling spirit, and you're not already down here, come down here. It's okay if you don't understand it all right now. That is okay. But you're saying, this witness is with me. I believe that that is me. Come down here. Join those that are down here. If you are, if you are stuck... Like you are in a straight jacket and you want to embrace Jesus and you can't. I'm talking to you. You want to step out and you feel like you literally can't. I am talking to you. That is demonic. That is not good. It's not natural. It's not healthy. Join us down here. We're going to deal with this right now. This is a form of witchcraft. You may be a leader in this house. You may be somebody who serves in this house. I feel very, very strongly that God wants to break the stronghold of Jezebel off of some people tonight. This is a very specific word. I, I would not just come up and start talking about Jezebel. This is very specific. Hallelujah. Just gonna wait a moment longer. I want to say Jezebel is a deceiver. Jezebel is a manipulator. That's what Jezebel does. Jezebel manipulates, it deceives, and it convinces you that you're good. That's what Jezebel does. Religion and Jezebel are friends. Religion likes to project fear onto people. Jezebel likes to project fear onto people. And then when you sin, you know what the Bible says? Can we put 1 John 4 up on the screen? Oh, we're about to pray. My wife and I had a, a fun message we were going to do together tonight. I don't know if we're going to get to it because this right here is more important than that. And we're about to see some people get set free. We're about to go back into that flow. We tapped into something tonight. Man, that prophetic anointing on your life, Zoe. 
Hallelujah. First John 4. I want to uh, I want to share this with you. Somebody say fear is a devil. Fear is a devil. Say fear is a devil. Say fear is not my friend. Fear is not your friend. Watch this. It says in verse, uh, let's see. Let's go to verse. Uh, let's go to verse sixteen. We're going to start there. It says, "We know how much God loves us, and we have put our trust in His love." Can I tell you? That's the gospel. <laughs> the gospel, it's all weaved throughout, it's all weaved throughout the Bible. It's so simple. I just put my trust in what Jesus did, and that is the love of God. <laughs> and because of what Jesus did, he disarmed the principalities above me in the second heaven that I cannot see. But they're there, but he disarmed them. And the way that he disarms them for us is by us trusting in what he did, and then we become dead. We become dead like him. In other words, our sinful nature is dead, and then your spirit's alive. God is love, and all who live in love, and all who live in love live in God, and God lives in them. Somebody say love. And as we live in God, our love grows more perfect. As you live where? In God. In God. As you live in God, as you trust. Somebody say, as I trust. This whole thing was set up to where you must trust Holy Spirit. You must trust Holy Spirit. The Bible says that Holy Spirit says what Jesus has him say. Jesus tells what Holy Spirit is supposed to say. Holy Spirit is God's Spirit. Jesus only says what he hears the Father saying. It's all going back to the Father. Can I hear an amen? It's really easy. Our love grows more perfect, so we will not be afraid on the day of judgment. We will not be afraid. You don't have to be afraid if you're going to make it to heaven or hell. But we can face him with confidence because we live like Jesus here in this world. Such love has no fear. What love? The Father's love. What conquers Jezebel? You putting your trust in the love of God. Knowing that he sent his son to die for you. Religion says you've got to clean yourself up in order for Jesus to accept you. But the gospel says if you want to be cleaned up, you've got to come to Jesus just as you are and he'll clean you up. The gospel says you can't clean yourself up. You must come to Jesus. He's the only one that can clean you up. And guess what? Tomorrow when you wake up and that sinful nature is aroused and you want to be grumpy or miserable or whatever it is because you have to renew your soul. Say, nope, I'm a spirit being and in my spirit, I have limitless Holy Spirit in my spirit. And I live out of my spirit being. And I'm trusting you, Holy Spirit, that you're filling my soul, my mind, my will, my emotions. You're, you're filling my mind. You're filling my soul with the love of God. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. And then he says this. Such love has no fear because perfect love expels all fear. And if we are afraid, which is what Jezebel loves to do, which is what religion tries to do, if you are afraid... It is for fear of punishment. You're afraid that God's going to judge you and punish you. And this shows that whoever is afraid have not fully experienced his perfect love. Oh, I sinned. I let God down. You haven't fully experienced his love. Because if you fully experience his love, there's no condemnation in Christ. And then at that moment, all you have to do is say, Father, forgive me. Wash me with your son's blood. I'm not going to beat myself up. Because I'm not the one who holds me up. You hold me up. And I lock my eyes. You know what we sin? Because we take our eyes off Jesus. Can I give you the simplest reason why we sin? Because we take our eyes off Jesus. We take our eyes off that we're a spirit being. Our environment around us, the people we hang with, all of that, they play a role. The enemy will use them to tempt us. But when you lock eyes with Jesus, it makes life so much easier. Holy Spirit is constantly reminding you, you're not your old man. You're not your old man. You're not your old man. This is what we're going to do. Prayer team, I want you to get ready. I want you to, I want you to get ready. Come on, stand on in, in, up in the front here. Hallelujah.
That's what we're going to do. I'm going to pray first. And then my wife's going to pray. And as we pray, church, if you can stand in your seat and engage in what God's doing down here. This is a Thursday night wild ones. This is for people who are hungry, people who are desperate. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray. We're going to break the spell of witchcraft off of your minds. It may feel like there's a root on the inside of your gut being ripped out. Let Jesus rip it out. Those of you who are praying, keep it simple. Say, I bind this spell, I cast it out of them, and I loosen my brother or sister in Christ. Keep it simple. And then pray the Father's love that will permeate their soul. Pray that I'll permeate their soul. Father, in Jesus' mighty name, I break the spell of witchcraft off of every single mind that have responded to this altar call that says I want to be set free from the, from the power of religion, from the bondage of religion. I break the spell and I bind that spell and I cast it out of their minds and out of their souls in Jesus' name. And I loosen my brother and I loosen my sister in Christ. Now prayer team begin to lay hands on them and begin to come into agreement with that prayer. I pray the Father's love over my brother and sister. I pray in Jesus' name for the Father's love to fill their hearts that tonight they will fully experience the love of God in the name of Jesus. I declare a fresh wave of the fear of the Lord arise in this house. A fresh wave of the fear of the Lord to arise in this house. A fresh wave of the fear of the Lord to arise in this house. I declare the love of God over this house. I declare the love of God would drip over this
as deep as you are bound in religion, you are going to feel a deep baptism of the love of the Father.
you guys say something broke off of me come on raise your hand give me a little bit more microphone say if you say something broke off you let me see your hand come on look around the room that spell of witchcraft is broken hallelujah hallelujah hey man he's got something what you got Tyler come here layers deep. So what I'm about to say is not like some surface level stuff. So you're going to have to be really honest with yourself. There's someone in this room and you, you want to sing. Maybe you are singing and jumping and dancing. But underneath there's a measure there's a measure of your heart that doesn't trust that he's actually forgiven you. It's holding you back because you don't there's, there's, a, there's a piece of, there's a fragment. It's a fragment. Like a hairline fracture of doubt that maybe he's not as good as he said he is. You've heard the message. You've sang the songs, but somewhere deep inside, there's a hairline fracture of, am I, am I really forgiven? Does he, did he really reach out his hand? And he's, he's staring straight at you. And he's saying, I'm as good as as they said I am. I'm, I'm as good as that word said I am, and I wanna show you. This is an invitation for you. There's, there's no shame to it. I don't even have to know what it is. Just between you and God, he's calling you out right now though. It's a special gift of grace in this moment to crack that thing off of you, to take that hairline fracture and push it back together. There will be no fracture left in you. He, he didn't save you for you to walk around for the next 40 years still deeply fractured in a deep part of your heart. He wants to remove all of it. It's all there. He heals completely. If that's you, raise your hand. Come down. Come down. There's more. There's more. There's more. This is you. You get it. You receive it. You're going to receive it. I'm going to pray for you. Can I pray for her? Is that okay? It, I sense the same thing. I sense there's more. It's, it's, it's a forgiveness issue. This is not a Jeze this Jezebel, yes, that answered the altar call. The, the Jezebel thing, control. This is unbelief. This is, I don't believe that he's, and, and that, that's not to bring shame on you. He wants to show you right now. He wants to demonstrate the full measure of his love to you. I, 
what I want to do before Tyler prays, if that's you, come down. If that's not you, take a couple steps back just so we know who it is. All right, you three come stand right here. Anybody else say it's me. You don't fully believe he's forgiven you of all of your sins. Even if it's 99.9% of your sins. And that's that one, that 0.1%, you're like, ah, I just don't know. I just don't know. Hey, but this, this is how powerful the word is. Look up here for a moment. Tyler, thank you for being obedient. You're about to pray. You're going to lay hands on him. All right, this is what we're going to do. Colossians chapter 2. Put it up on the screen for me. Verse 13. I want you to read the word. I want you to read this. It doesn't matter. Listen, not to belittle him being moved by, used by the Holy Ghost. You've got to see this in the word. Because anybody can come and say, oh, Tyler was just, it was just a, a thought that hit him and we're just giving it a chance to come up. It's Holy Ghost. But let me show you in the word. You were dead because of your sins and because your sinful nature was not yet cut away. Then, somebody say then. Then God made you alive with Christ for he forgave 99.9% of your sins? All. All of your sins. All of your sins. All of your sins have been forgiven. All. 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 Go for it. Go. All. In Jesus' name. Stretch forth your hand right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. I bind that lie that says they're not fully forgiven. And I thank you, Lord. I bind it. I break it off of their minds. And I thank you, Lord, you're filling their soul with truth, your word, that they are fully forgiven. All of their sins have been forgiven. You are a new creation in Christ. All of your sins have been forgiven. Let truth fill your mind. Embrace the word like you would embrace a hug from somebody you love. Embrace the word. That's Jesus trying to hug you, and it's like it's like you hug him, but there's still like a, like one one percent. You're not fully and embrace it now in Jesus' name. The peace of God comes over you, and I thank you. The peace of God is coming over you right now. In Jesus' name. There it is. Put your hands on your stomach. You're a new creation. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You're fully forgiven. You're fully forgiven. If that's for anybody else, just receive it. Hallelujah. See, in order for us as laborers to break this spell of witchcraft off of people, the laborers have to be walking in freedom and not underneath that spell. Because that spell, that spell will try to come on you tomorrow. That spell is going to try to come on you Saturday. It's going to try to hit you Sunday. That spell is sneaky. Before you know it, before you know it, it's easy to move right back into works. Right back into works. And it doesn't matter what your personality type is. It's irrelevant. Well, I know he's forgiven you, but he hasn't forgiven me. That's not what the Bible says. Hallelujah. There's freedom. Let's sing that again. That's so good. There's freedom in the river. Freedom and healing and joy. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of what we eat or drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy. There's freedom in the river. Righteousness, There's peace, and joy. Come on. Come on. There's freedom in the river. There's power in the river. There's power, power, power. Hey. There's power in the river.
pocket I want you to put up media team that picture that Lydia drew I want you to see this prophetic picture Lydia down here hanging out with the Holy Spirit she drew this picture this is our building and underneath it is water and roots roots that are growing deep she drew that and posted that on her Facebook page and then tonight Unbehold to me, we were going to hit this flow. I didn't tell the team to hit the flow. Zoe probably had no idea, did you, that you were going to hit this flow? No idea. And then here it is. There's a river from the throne of God that's being released out of this house into Hunt County. And that same river is in you. That same river is in you. The lie of the enemy is the river is only in the church. But newsflash, you are the church. So that river is in you. Can I hear an amen? amen. There's healing in the river. There's power in the river. There's the, you know, the, the power comes from the love. Did you know that? If you want to see signs, wonders, and miracles, you have to believe that God loves you. And to the measure that you believe that God loves you is the measure that you'll operate in the love of God which means the measure of power you'll operate in because power comes through love. Hallelujah. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that amazing? So if you think God loves you little, you'll move in little love, which means you'll move in little power. But if you think God loves you big, then you'll be full of his love. You won't be fearing anything. And you realize that you can move in big power. Jesus said it this way. Is it easier for me to raise the crippled or is it easy for me to save his soul? Which one's easy? Which one's easier? Or not save his soul. He said, forgive him of his sins. He said, is it easier for me to heal him or easy, easier for me to forgive him? What's Jesus' point? It's both equally as easy. Because Jesus understood the value of living life in the river. Life in the river isn't a song. It's the spirit that's behind the song. It's the spirit that's moving forth. That free, There's just a freedom in the atmosphere. There's just joy in the atmosphere. Something's been lifted in this house right here. So don't let me Sunday morning come up in here and say, who's bewitched you like Paul did? Come on, y'all. Walk in freedom. Can I hear an amen? I don't want to be coming up in here Sunday morning, and I see y'all being free Thursday night after working all day. And then Sunday morning, you got a good night's rest Saturday and had fun with your family Saturday. And then you come Sunday and you're back underneath that jacked up demonic witchcraft spell where it's like, whatever. Come on, where you're not worthy to praise, you don't feel worthy to give, you don't feel worthy to worship. That's, that's when you know you're under the spell of witchcraft called religion. Can I hear an amen? Amen. Babe, come up here. Hallelujah. Man. That's so good. You guys may grab a seat. Y'all might as well just stay up here. We'll, we'll close it out. We'll close it out with that song here in a minute. All right? I want you to tell them what uh, that story this week that, um, yeah, yeah, that, that somebody told you at Lakeview. That's no, okay. I want you to listen to this story. This is so cool. I want you to know witchcraft, you know, sin is sin just like witchcraft is witchcraft. And the lie of the enemy is, well, there's good witchcraft and bad witchcraft. And religion says, well, I'm good witchcraft. But it doesn't say it's witchcraft. It says it's, it says it's the gospel. So it, it just straight up lies to you. No, this is the gospel. But it's witchcraft. I want you to hear this story 
of what happened, and I want you to know how powerful living life in the Spirit is. Check this out. That's so funny you brought me up here because I was standing there thinking what, what I'm about to share this story what is insight into what is going on in the Spirit. And I was standing over here thinking like, man, I literally see a river flowing through in the Spirit. And here is, here's what happened. Here's this testimony. So at Winter Fire on Tuesday night, some of y'all were there. Pastor Lindsay preached. And then he gave an altar call towards the end about uh, if you're dealing with witchcraft, I think. If you're dealing with witchcraft. And a bunch of people responded. And we prayed for people. And God moved. And it was awesome. It, it, it was People were free. Well, after church... Some of you guys know Cece Contreras over at Lakeview. She does their Spanish translation, and she was doing Spanish translation that night. And so her and her sister, uh, I think her name is Monica, came up to me after church. Everybody was dismissed. We're all just hanging out. And they came up to me, and she said, we want to respond to the altar call about witchcraft. I was translating, so we couldn't respond. But I want you to pray because... What they realized is that there had been for generations, I think she said three generations, her family has been involved in witchcraft. And for three generations, every person has had a child with mental disability. And she said, while we were doing that altar call, the Holy Spirit connected the dots. And I believe that that is a curse from the witchcraft. And she, Cece, has a mentally disabled child. And we've been contending for his healing for years since, since we've known them. Anyway, so I'm like amped. I'm like, yes, let's pray right now. And I pray for both of them. Well, her sister, Monica, says, also, I want us to pray specifically for my daughter. She's grown. But she is currently involved in witchcraft and New Age stuff, like, right now. And I want to pray that God would break this off of her. So we go to town, and we're just praying and, you know, binding the devil and loosing their family cutting off generational curses. I'm declaring healing to every disabled child in their bloodline. I mean, we're just going after it. We pray over Monica's daughter and just that God would awaken her and get a hold of her. We move on with life. I'm like, well, I, I told them after we prayed, I said, now you got to ask God for open doors so that you can talk to your family members and let them know we're breaking this off. We're done with this in our family. This is no more. We're breaking off every curse. And I said, just pray for open doors and God will open the doors. And that was it. Well, I, I went to Lakeview Monday night and I taught lecture over there. And after OSM, uh, Monica comes up to me and she said, Pastor, I got to share with you what God has been doing in our family. And I'm like, okay. And she starts sharing, you know, we prayed Tuesday night. Well, Sunday, my daughter called me and asked if she could come over and hang out and just talk. And evidently, she made it sound like this is not something that happens a lot. But her, her daughter just wanted to come talk to her. And so she came over and Monica said, I knew that this was an appointment and an open door from the Lord that I've been praying for. And so she started talking to her about we're breaking generational curses. We're not doing witchcraft anymore. You're going to be set free from this. We prayed for you Tuesday night and we prayed for our family Tuesday night. And her daughter stops her and says, wait, when did you pray? And she said, last Tuesday night. And her daughter said, this is super weird, but I came home from work Tuesday night, and after work, I always lay in my bed and listen to music and just chill and veg out. And she said, I was laying in my bed, I was listening to music after work, and out of nowhere, I saw a woman's hand come into my room and reach in and try to rescue me, and her hand had long black nails on it. And I'm showing you right now. Monica said, I told her that was Pastor Jody's hand. She had long black nails. And I'm telling you, God was doing something when we were praying. I'm telling you, I got my nails done that Tuesday afternoon. That is what's happening in the spirit when we pray. We have no idea. The Bible says not to look at the natural and what we can see, but to set our eyes on the unseen. Because I'm telling you, God is moving. Assignments are being fulfilled in the spirit. I looked at Monica and I'm doing this to her. My eyes are huge. And I said, I don't even know what 
to say. I said, well, did she get delivered? And she said, not yet, but it started. The work was started. A seed was sown. Honestly, I don't know if I was pulling her out or dropping a seed. But what, what my whole, the point behind the story is I came home and I am like, I'm freaked out by this because I'm like, I don't even know if this is like biblical. I've never heard of this. But as we always say, if it's Jesus, I want it. And we are praying for work to be done and damage to be done in the spirit. So I told Pastor Lindsay, what this makes me want to do is quit everything else in my life and just pray all the time. Because we have no idea. We have no idea. You have no idea what your prayers are doing for your family. You have no idea what they are seeing in the spirit as we are calling them home and as we're breaking curses off of their lives. What if they're seeing your hand? What if your family is seeing visions in the spirit? What if they're seeing dreams at night of salvation come into their home and deliverance and freedom and healing come into their home? Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Anyways, that's all. That's so good. That's what you call supernatural. When God's super meets our natural, that's Holy Ghost. I'll tell you a quick story about Kenneth Hagin. How many of you guys know Kenneth Hagin? He's now with the Lord. He was a great minister. And, uh, but he, uh, he tells this story about a couple that he heard about or knew personally. And God woke up the woman at night to, to begin to pray, and she didn't know what to pray for. So she prayed and went back to bed, but didn't have a release in her spirit. So God woke her up again, and she got up and prayed. Eventually, her husband got up and started praying with her. And they remembered, one of them remembered there was a church van or something with people from the church that were coming back from a trip. So they were thinking, maybe we need to pray for them. They prayed, still didn't have a release in their spirit. And so that God gave, Holy Spirit gave the husband wisdom and said, pray that whoever this person is we're supposed to pray for, pray that God gives them a dream. So they prayed that God would give them a dream, and they went to sleep. True story. The next day, there's a guy who went to a Holy Ghost church. He goes to work. He worked on, it sounded like some kind of construction job, manufacturing job, whatever it was. He gets there, and one of his coworkers didn't show up to work. And his coworker's assignment was to go to the top of this tower and man, man the position up there. And, the, and so this Holy Ghost guy begins to climb the tower and either gets to the top but doesn't stay long or gets like halfway up there and comes back down. I, I, I forget all the details. It's been a minute since I heard the story. But he, he doesn't stay long and he comes back down and he tells his supervisor or somebody, he says, I, I, can't, I can't go up there. I had a dream last night that that cable up there snapped and chopped my head off. Well, there was another co-worker standing by and he said, I'm not superstitious, so I'll go up there. Well, the co-worker the co goes up there, and I think within 14 minutes, that cable snapped, chopped that guy's head off, killed him, and hit that Holy Ghost believer in the back of the head. His head hit the Holy Ghost believer in the back. This is the power of prayer, and this gives us, this gives us insight into the spirit realm. You may wake up thinking you've got indigestion, but really the Holy Ghost is using that to tell you to wake up and pray. You may wake up, you know, I woke up one time in the middle of the night because I just simply had to use the bathroom. I had to make my bladder gladder. That's all I had to do. And as soon as I woke up, I heard Python spirit. I mean, clear as day. It was like as if somebody said it in my ear. I didn't hear an audible voice, but it was just so loud. Python spirit. And I knew that was for our church and that was for Hunt County. Well, Python spirit is the spirit of divination, which is witchcraft. And that Sunday I preached on Python spirit, and that spirit got broken off of, I don't know, I don't know how many people in our church, to be honest, could have just been one, could have been more than one. But God began to advance us after I preached on Python spirit. There's something else he showed me that I did that same day. But point being, Holy Ghost is talking. Chances are a lot more than we're listening. And we're a spirit being. So I want you to close your eyes and pray this before we go into money talk. 
just pray this simple prayer. Say, Father, come on, all over this place, say it bold and say it loud. Say, Father, make your reality the spirit realm my reality. Say that again. Say, Father, make your reality the spirit realm my reality. Grow me past what I see with my natural eye. Grow me past what I feel. Teach me, Holy Spirit, to identify and live out of my spirit, man. Where you live, Holy Spirit. For against that, there is no law. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen and amen. God's good, isn't he? Oh, I, man, I could, I could preach right now on the kingdom of God. Oh, my goodness. I could just, I could give you verses that would bless you. But maybe, maybe we'll do that a different day. We're going to do money talk, and then the MC is going to come and close us out. I do want to remind you this Sunday, though, we're sharing a big announcement. You're going to want to be here. It's going to be awesome. And then we have our Pulse Night. Everybody who serves in this house, you're serving on any team. We're having a special night with the Pulse. And anybody who wants to join the Pulse, the Pulse is simply anybody who serves and volunteers in this church. And um, if, you, if you're interested in serving and getting connected, come to that night as well. We'd love to have you. It's going to be a fun night. Go with me in your Bible to Colossians. Let's bring the music down a little bit. Once the MC's done, worship team, I'll just go back into that flow. That's just so good. Bring that flow on Sunday too. Just put that in the, put that somewhere in the set. It's just so good. Are you going to be singing Sunday? Yeah? Awesome. That'd be great. I want to tell you too, we're having another revival weekend coming up. And uh, that's in March. You'll be hearing about that. What are the dates? March what? Come on, somebody look that up for me real quick. I want you to mark your calendar because I want you to begin to pray into that weekend. Pray for souls to come to Jesus and their spirit be saved. 18th through the 20th. It's a Friday night through Sunday night. It's going to be at Lakeview. Sunday morning we'll still have church here. They'll have church there at Lakeview. But all the campuses are going to come together. Um, and we're going to party and see some people give their life to Jesus and see witchcraft broken off of people. Come on now. We're going to be going back to Hope Week, uh, going up to Eau Claire again in March. Is that the week before that? So we'll be getting back from another Hope Weekend that they're doing, doing the same thing, and then rolling into that weekend. Oh, it's going to be such a great week. That's in March. That's right around the corner. All right, let me show you something. Uh, Colossians chapter 2. The kingdom of God, I, I want you to, somebody bring me that stand real quick just so I can have a little bit of mobility up here. Somebody say the kingdom of God. Oh, that was, that was cute. Some of you did it louder than others. Say the kingdom of God. Come on. The kingdom of God is your, is, is your, is your new reality. Thanks, Jake. The kingdom of God is actually, I'm going to keep this brief. The kingdom of God is actually your new life. That, that is the new reality. The Bible says Jesus, who is your real life, Jesus is seated where? Not a trick question. He's seated where? At the right hand of the Father. So then how are we seated with him in heavenly places? By the Spirit. Your spirit now has Holy Spirit living in it. And I point to my stomach because out of your bellies will flow rivers. Holy Ghost lives somewhere up in here in your spirit, man. Right in here. So, somebody say the kingdom of God. All right. This is what's amazing about the kingdom of heaven. Jesus said, pray this way, my Father in heaven, may your name be kept holy. Your kingdom come, your will be done where? Where? On earth as it is where? And heaven. So let me ask you this question. I want you to think about it. Do you know, how do I word this? Do you know what is rightfully yours through the blood in the kingdom of heaven? Let me put it this way. Do you know what you have access to in the kingdom of heaven? 
until you're thinking. Jesus is the one who told us to pray that way, not man. Pray your kingdom come here as it is there. Well, I'll finally be financially free in heaven. That's, that's you, you will. That's true, but that's also making an excuse to not contend for it here. I'm looking up something, guys. Hang on. Do you know how to access your spiritual inheritance? Here. Do you even know what your spiritual inheritance is? This is how amazing God is. I'm about to put some heads on tilt. God can make something out of nothing. How many of you guys would agree with that? If he needed to. He said, pray, my kingdom come, I will be done. So if God put it in your heart to pray that your driveway was made out of gold, is that an impossible prayer? What does human reasoning say, though? Is that necessary? Is that really necessary? I mean, what will people think? I mean, really, they drive by and there's starving children out there, but here I am, I got a driveway of gold. Is that necessary? I mean, is concrete parking lot really necessary? We're in the country. Why not just keep it crushed concrete? Why not just keep it crushed concrete? Everybody's used to it. Is that really necessary? Is you being debt free really necessary? I mean, you got enough money to pay all your bills, so why don't you just wait for those loans to carry out and spend about, you know, billions of dollars on interest? Yeah, let's waste lots of money on interest because we want to be a lazy believer. Well, you know, God's provided. It's not really necessary to really contend to be debt free, He's already provided for our monthly expenses. But at the same time, I'm throwing away $300 every month on interest. So I'm actually wait the money I have, what's well, actually God's, I'm just going to waste kingdom money every month. It was God's idea for us to come into agreement with his will on earth as it is in heaven. Is God in debt? Is God paying interest payments to anybody? Does God have credit card debt? It's got up there thinking, oh, man, MasterCard. I got to be waiting on hold all the time over MasterCard. Discovery rates just skyrocketed. Oh, no, what about the mortgage? It's got up there dealing with that. Okay, so we know that, but what are we doing with that knowledge? Because the Bible says even what rebel, the little revelation you do have, if you don't use it, it will be taken away from you. You know what that means? You live life in a fog. It's not really not so sorry. And it just got taken away from you. And now instead of contending for God's will to be done in your finances, we just walk around and, well, thank God all my needs are met. I'm blessed and highly favored. Actually, there's money going towards interest payments right now. So this is what happens. How to, how to access my spiritual inheritance, which is actually more real than the natural realm. Your spiritual inheritance is more real than what you see right here. But if you don't believe it, you'll struggle accessing it. That's why that prayer, Father, let your reality become my reality. And when you live in the spirit realm, then you take command over what's rightfully yours through the blood. It's not arrogance. It's trust in the blood. Oh, wow, they're just really arrogant. No, actually, they've got a revelation that that other person doesn't have. So let me teach you something real quick. The kingdom simply means the king's domain. I want you to say this. I'm an ambassador of the king's domain. Do you look like you're an ambassador of the king's domain? 
Do you talk like you're an ambassador of the king's domain? Does your bank account back up the king's domain? Does the car you drive back up the king's domain? Do the clothes you wear back up the king's domain? It's a game changer. Because he's got streets of gold. But I'm fine with my pinto. You know, I don't want to go around just gloating and boasting, I tell you. So God keeps me humble by driving this piece. That's fine. You'll make it to heaven, and God will use you to bless people and, you know, spiritually, and God can use you to see people come into the kingdom, but that's not God's will for you. It's not God's will for you. Your spiritual inheritance. So I'm going to say my spiritual inheritance. It's nothing. Now the Holy Spirit will lead you. He led my wife and I into this house that we have. He led us into it. We didn't have the money to buy it, but he's provided supernaturally. No joke, just supernatural provision. Supernatural. Three, over three grand last week. One day we received over four grand. Just supernatural provision. But we sowed a lot of our savings from the house we sold. You know, we lived here in Caddo. We flipped that house, made really good money. God used people to bless us, paid off the debt that we inherited from that house. And then we had a chunk of money in our savings, and we sowed probably 75, 80% of it. So you know what? What's coming in now is because of the seed that we've sown then. And even that's a small percentage compared to what's on the way. Come on. It has nothing to do with me being a pastor. I don't think, it doesn't matter about pastors or apostles or whatever your occupation is. or your, It's irrelevant. You're a son and a daughter. It has everything to do with being a son and a daughter and has everything to do with are you following biblical principles. Now, let me wrap up here because I said I wouldn't go long. I'm called to bring the king's domain everywhere I go and everywhere God sends me. We do biblical, spiritual things in the natural realm to release things in the spirit realm that manifest back in the natural realm. Let me say that again. We do biblical, spiritual things in the natural realm. Sow and you'll reap. That's a biblical, spiritual principle that you physically have to come up and give or give online or whatever, and you give and you sow. Right? I've heard my wife and I drive a, uh, we drive a Cadillac. It's one of our cars. And it's been said that at a certain point in mileage that the Cadillac starts going downhill. Well, we've hit that mileage. And can I tell you, the Cadillac's not going downhill. We're actually above the mileage, and it's not going downhill. Because the Lord rebukes the devourer for your sake, for those who tithe. Come on. Hallelujah. Somebody asked me today, they said, how do you like the Cadillac? I said, I'm blessed because the Cadillac's paid for. Paid off. I'm blessed. I like it. I like a paid off car. I like it a lot. Come on. So when I find myself start getting anxious and itchy for a new car, what I have to do is Holy Spirit reminds me, be thankful for this. And I'll say, Lord, thank you for this car. Thank you for this car. It's paid for. It's a blessing. It's a blessing right here. It's a blessing. I'll take that paid off car. Hallelujah. Come on. We weren't out there being like, Lord, we, we want a mansion. Bless God. We went into a house and we we're like, this is beautiful. Then we heard how much it costs. We're like, okay. All right. That'd be great, but that ain't where we are today. So we're going to. All right, and you can't show it on your face. You just have to be like, all right, thank you so much. And you got to act like you have the money, but you know in the back of your head, this ain't happening. This ain't the Lord's will for me right now. You got to use wisdom. But the Lord led us. Somebody say, the Lord led. The Lord leads you. I want this to, I want this to provoke some of you in the room to be like, I'll, where you can open your eyes. God's got more for you. I knew God had a house for us. I just didn't know the timing of it. Are you hearing me? 
Like the whole, like the, the whole point of this is God's got blessings in store for you as your inheritance on this side of eternity because it's part of your spiritual inheritance. You got to let the Lord lead you. Amen. We're not, we're not just out there like, let's be big ballers now. Let's go. Come on. All right. I can tell some of you guys like that. Some of you didn't. All right. Let me say this, say this again. We do biblical spiritual things in the natural realm to release things in the spirit realm that then manifest back in the natural realm. You sow seed, you pay tithe, and then what happens? It releases, it releases finances in the spirit realm. God puts it on somebody's heart. Hey, bless this person. Hey, it's a spiritual transaction. Hey, pay off that for them. Hey, sow seed in their life. Hey, you see them over there? You see their heart? You see, you see what she's doing right there? Hey, go over there and bless them. Pay their mortgage this month. Hey, go pay off their car this month. Hey, 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 bless them with $100. And he uses us as we listen. And then what we do is we obey. And then that person, because they sowed seed, now it just, it was a seed that they sowed. And then God used you, a spiritual transaction from the Holy Ghost, to say, hey, do this. And then guess what happened? That seed they sowed multiplied and it manifested through your hands in the natural realm. Isn't that amazing? Or you get an unexpected check in the mail. Or you get a phone call saying, hey, Granny died and she left you $50 million. You're like, hallelujah. Come on. I mean, not hallelujah that Granny died. Hallelujah that you got $50 million. My heart breaks for Granny. As long as she's in heaven, I'm going to rejoice and I'm going to receive the $50 million. Hallelujah. All right. Amen. We've got big vision here. Let me, let me cast, stand to your feet with me. Go ahead and get ready to sow and give. Hallelujah. Get ready to give. Get ready to sow. Let the Holy Spirit put it on your heart. What he'd have you sow. We, uh, Pastor Evan and I walked in the room Sunday night after our key leaders meeting, and God gave me a vision. And I saw this place, can't say it was full, but there was tons of, of school of ministry students in this place going after God. We are in the back of the auditorium, and we were in a conversation, and just boom, right there, just saw this place. Just lots of students going after God. One day, what's probably going to happen is this building you're standing in is going to be turned into a kids, youth, and school of ministry center. We're going to have a new building on this property. We have almost 10 acres of land right here. And we got a mortgage payment that is going to be canceled out because God's going to bless this house with supernatural provision to pay off the debt of this property. Come on, that's around $800,000, $850,000, somewhere in there. All right? We sowed seed in our Lakeview campus a year or two ago for the purpose of paying this property off. I don't have time to get into this teaching, but the Bible talks about he's looking for those who will eagerly claim what is rightfully, their, rightfully theirs, which is their spiritual inheritance. He's looking for those who will eagerly claim Claim it, claim it, that's mine, that's mine, debt free. If it's in the word, it's part of your spiritual inheritance and it's yours. Oh, no man nothing but the debt to love them, the Bible says, that's God's will for you. Oh, no man nothing but the debt, what could you do if you were debt free? How less could you work a job and work more for the kingdom? What could you do? What would God have you do? Hallelujah. Spiritual inheritance, how do you access your, through the blood, but you got to know what is rightfully yours. Amen. Amen. Now, materialism, can't take it with you to heaven. Can't take it with you to heaven. Can't take your money. You know, God was showing me money is simply numbers. It's simply numbers. When I do my budget, I see, I see numbers. It's numbers. And it is money. I see numbers. And it is. He can make those numbers increase. He can have me give it all away and I'll see a zero. But I know that even though in the natural I see a zero, there's a spiritual transaction going on and there's about to be a big wave blow in and that zero is about to turn to 
double, triple, quadruple what's in there. That's how God works. We look at the natural and fear creeps in, or you can see it through spirit eyes and say, oh, I did something in the natural. It was a spiritual transaction. And now something's going on in the spirit. I can't see, but something's about to break. Amen? That's how you access your spiritual inheritance. I want you to come into agreement with me and our staff as place will be paid for. And the spirit, it's already done. Everything's been done through Christ. It's already been accomplished. So what we're going to do is come into agreement with God's will that's going to manifest in the natural. Amen? And do the same thing over your finances. Amen? Amen. Let's pray for God's house first. It's more important than our own house. Can we do that? It's more important than my house. It's more important than your house. Father, right now we thank you that everything has already been accomplished and fulfilled in and through Christ, the work on the cross. Every blessing, every blessing, every spiritual inheritance has already been fulfilled. So, Lord, right now we come into agreement as a body of believers united with one heart. And we come into agreement with your will that this place is debt free. In the spirit, it already is debt free. And so we come into agreement with your will that the money will manifest itself now. We call it forth now in Jesus' mighty name. Will you do that right now? We call it forth to manifest now. We claim it eagerly. This is our campus that you've called us to steward well. Jesus, you're the head of the church. And we come into agreement with your will in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, we thank you that this church will have more money than we know what to do with, that we will be able to expand our kids' facility, expand and build a new building when that time comes. Lord, we thank you for the vision. Almost 10 acres of land right here. We want to use every square inch of it to bring you glory in Jesus' name. And, and everybody said, amen. amen. Now lift your hands. I want to pray over you and your family. And I want you to come into agreement with this prayer. Father, I thank you that your word says, oh, no man nothing but the debt to love them. And I thank you once again that all the promises, debt free, every spiritual inheritance, everything you call us to, which it is bigger than us. We cannot do on our own. We have to trust in you, Holy Spirit. That's the key. Be led by the Holy Spirit and trust Holy Spirit. Trust the Father that he's going to provide. Father, I thank you that everything's been accomplished in Christ. And we come into agreement with your will. For every family in this room, as they put these biblical principles to work. It's a natural step, but it's spiritual. As they put it to work, they tie it with their faith, that Lord, provision's going to manifest. Starting now, it's going to manifest. In Jesus' name, it's going to manifest. It's not our job to figure out how it's going to manifest. It's our job to believe for it. That's our job. Somebody say, it's my job to believe for it. It's God's job to manifest it. Come on. Say, it's God's job to manifest it. It's my job to believe for it. Say, I eagerly claim what is mine through the blood of Jesus. That's my spiritual inheritance. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen, amen and amen. You may give it this time. MC, come close us out. Give it up for Pastor Caleb as he comes. And then when he's done... The team's going to lead us out with that amazing prophetic flow. Hey, listen, the Bible says that you are royalty. So go ahead as a child of God, daughter of God, claim your royalties. Amen. You got some royalties that you need to start claiming through the word of God as you are royalty. Amen. So go ahead and start claiming those things. But this Sunday, everybody say this Sunday, is Vision Sunday. Everybody say Vision Sunday. You are going to want to be here. Why? Because we're going to go deep into what we're moving into, what we've been talking about, discipleship, and what we're going to be rolling out there. Also with outreach and what this is going to look like this year for us. So you're going to want to be here with us that morning. And then if you serve on the Pulse or you would like to get involved, Sunday night we're going to be having our Pulse meeting at that time. So come be with us Sunday night as well. But also I want to remind us, Dakota and Ingrid, you guys raise up your hand back there. Look at that amazing couple. 
This Sunday, Provision Sunday, our leadership's going to be praying them out. We're going to be releasing them this Sunday. As you are well aware, hopefully, they're going to be planning an Oasis campus in Tampa, Florida. And so this Sunday, we're going to release them out, and you're going to have an opportunity to sow into them. And what comes in is going to help get them launched out there and get planted. Amen. So be prepared to give this Sunday as well. We love you guys. Be on Oasis wherever you go, and we'll see you Sunday.